FM Pone has just given his sixth map for CSGO, Santorini, a major overhaul, much like Cash's update last year. You might not notice it at first, yet almost everything has changed. Not just visually though, which was mainly what Cash's change was about. Santorini has received some gameplay changes as well. I spoke with the man behind the map to discover what his thoughts on it were and where he wants the map to be headed in the future. FM Pone revealed to me that his favourite position of Dust 2 is Catwalk. It's a very aggressive position and has perhaps changed the way he has designed Santorini, intending for it to favour faster paced and more pushy playstyles than his earlier maps did. Rather than to camp, he wants to encourage CTs to push beyond the bombsites themselves, hoping for flanking and outmanoeuvring the other team to play a crucial role in rounds. He mentioned names such as Kenny S and Get Right, and has designed Santorini to let players such as these to really play to their strengths. Get Right, for example, is typically a very sneaky player who would utilise the flanking opportunities that Santorini provides whereas Kenny S likes shooting people with big guns. And this is sort of encouraged as well. But back to the movement across the map for a moment. This has played a large part in the map's latest update, with the addition of a number of shortcuts that players can utilise with a degree of skill and experience on the map. In middle, there's a jump that you can do into the window here. At B, you can jump onto the logs here and into the passage to mid. Or you can hop up onto the crates and over onto the top of the lights here. Very much like the B site of Cash. FM Pone says that he worked hard to balance risk versus reward with these jumps, so in actual matches players have to weigh up whether it's worth attempting these jumps for the benefits they provide. But why include them in the first place? He said that he learned from his earlier maps that it was best to raise the skill ceiling as much as possible with the layouts. This doesn't just reward pro players, but also makes it challenging and rewarding for all skill levels who bother to research and to practice these things. It's essentially making extra gameplay where otherwise it would have just been a standard part of the level. And it's these small touches which transform a good map into a great one. He mentioned that during playtesting, players suggested having a way of getting from B to mid of some kind. He could have done it with a ladder, but felt that having a three-stage trick jump was much more enjoyable. He stressed that it was important that players could do it on their own without requiring a head boost from another teammate. You might think that needing two people would encourage more players to hang around this part of the map, but in practice it did the opposite, as the boost wasn't fun or even practical a lot of the time. The way he's done it now, by rewarding individual skill instead, has made this area become a hotspot in matches. Such a change doesn't look impressive on patch notes, but in practice has a profound impact on the way the map plays and how much people enjoy it. Indeed, he has also discovered that the things that make a map good for high levels of competitive play often also benefit casual matches, which is a good thing, since working on these things benefits the whole community. Everyone appreciates easily learnable map layouts, clean graphics and high FPS, which are all things he's worked to improve with Santorini. He's also paid a lot of attention to mid. He wants for it to be home to explosive and epic battles much more so than in his earlier maps. He hopes to do this by giving the area great importance for both teams. It provides terrorists with flexible options for attacking either site. What with the map's flanking style, he wants to encourage CTs to have two of their players guarding mid and has provided them with many different spots to guard from to hopefully keep terrorists on their toes. By having more players in mid and away from the sites, it will make the rounds play out more dynamically, raising the skill ceiling by encouraging a more fluid and flanky style of play for both teams. He has almost completely opened up the skybox to encourage creative grenades. He says how this can be at the expense of frame rate, but insists that he has pushed both to the absolute limit. With this latest update, he has clipped much of the maps for grenades, making them bounce more reliably off of surfaces, which will give players more faith when using them to make creative bounces and so on. When it comes to playtesting, he says that he relies on 10-man matches comprising of veteran and semi-pro players. But rather than just to listen to their feedback, he likes to be in the match himself. I can certainly agree with him here. Even if you make every bit of a map, if you don't play on it then you don't know how it feels or what its strengths and weaknesses are. Besides, what's the point in making maps if you don't play on them yourself? He says that the real test is whether he enjoys playing on his own creations, and if he doesn't, that's when he knows it's time to go back to the drawing board. The final question I asked was, why continue updating a map so long after its first release, when you could instead be working on another? He didn't really have an answer to this. He finds reason to stick with a map when he sees that other people enjoy it, and he doesn't just like the idea of pumping out new maps. He feels that doing so would be like saying that the older ones had no lasting value to the community. He takes pride in each of his creations and wants for each of them to stand on their own and for their own merits, without relying on his name or reputation to be worth playing. He designs his maps for top tier team play and his goal is always to have his maps played by professionals and viewed by thousands. He would love to see Santorini earn a place in CSGO's history. Santorini is already available in Sevo and ESEA and he is currently in talks with Faceit, so it's a map that you'll likely see around quite a bit. 